guys how's it going very very long um my final kind of long break um before the football season guys uh just was out of the uh was out of town was pretty far away actually for um for for eight days and you know it was a combination of good and bad uh trip outside of the country actually and um it was good it was good to get away um uh and but i'm just to tell you the truth i'm you know i'm happy to be back you know i'm happy to be back and i'm happy to be talking about football again and i was even able to watch um some of these preseason games and appreciate everybody you know tuning in to a lot of recruiting tape that we did uh during the summer and now we are in the midst we are in the midst of uh preseason football for the nfl and then the huskers are going to ireland uh with northwestern and the huskers are going to begin scott frost and his fifth year uh as a coach in nebraska um and it's going to be spectacular uh just to just every game is going to be so impactful for frost if he wants to survive if he wants to get nebraska to get to eight wins which actually is possible with their schedule but you know let's look at let's look at our preseason takeaways for week one so First off, let's talk about Baker Mayfield. Um, Baker Mayfield has seemingly shut the door on the competition in Carolina. Baker Mayfield has seemingly won the competition already in Carolina. Um, There's reports that they're shopping Sam Darnold, and Baker Mayfield's just an alpha. You know, when he came into Oklahoma, uh, it was the year where Trevor Knight just won the Sugar Bowl over Alabama. He quickly took over that place. He took over that building. He took over that facility. Uh, Baker Mayfield now, um, Baker Mayfield in Carolina did the exact same thing with the Panthers. And um, he he's really competitive. He's very serious. He's trying to take care of the football, trying to advance the team up the field. He's really matured. And I think that his starting experience in Cleveland's really going to help him. And he looked great. And Shai Smith from South Carolina uh, was very, very good. Um, he's always been a good route runner. And at South Carolina, he played with some decent quarterbacks. But uh, Shai Smith really flourishing um, in the preseason and could be a trusted target for Baker Mayfield. So if Carolina this year, right, if Baker Mayfield goes out and they win the division or they're very competitive in their defense, I mean, they drafted all defense two years ago. So their defense put them in position to win games. So, you know, you look at if McCaffrey can stay healthy – and DJ Moore and Baker Mayfield, I mean, this team can be really competitive. And, you know, Tom Brady's missing time. You know, is the Bucks defense going to be as sound? You 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 lose a head coach and Bruce Arians. You're now bringing in Todd Bowles and Leftwich. And I know that, you know, Leftwich and Brady are still there, uh, but, but you are losing Bruce Arians. So, um, and all the retirement rumors with Tom Brady, all of the reps that have been missed uh, during this offseason, um, maybe it'll prove to be a nothing burger because it is Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback to ever play football. Um, who knows? But that division could be open. You know, a team that I'm down on is New Orleans. Um, I just think that, you know, Dennis, you go from Dennis, you go from Sean Payton to Dennis Allen. And what I'm going to say here is that Atlanta, I love the way that Atlanta builds it. I love the way that they're a tough football team. They're gritty. They're just like the Lions. They're coming up. And Desmond Ritter really showed a lot of poise in his game. I mean, Desmond Ritter showed, you know, threw it with accuracy, was able to roll out to his left a lot, a lot of play action rollouts for Desmond, and he was really in control, and he also showed off his athleticism where Desmond Ritter can scramble. If nothing's there, he can pick up yards on his own, and he demonstrated that against Detroit, so Ritter 
was really, really poised in this game. I mean, I looked at Malik Willis a little bit, and Willis had some explosive plays. Kenny Pickett came in against Ferd Stringers. He did all right. He led a very nice drive at the end of the game, Kenny Pickett did. But again, I think Ritter so far um, has been the best rookie quarterback in the class. I also fault that Jordan Love, I mean, Jordan Love, a couple of interceptions were not on him. Um, you know, Romeo Dubs could have had a catch along the sideline, but Romeo you will burn somebody and and love threw it out there I mean love has decent touch I mean the one thing is he does miss the very easy throws but he's an explosive player he made several wow throws against the 49ers it's just is Jordan love ever going to get his opportunity you know is he ever going to get a chance to start in this league because I mean there's, there's several quarterbacks that I think that Jordan Love is better than um, from the get-go. I mean, he has great athleticism. He can really throw the ball with velocity. He's learning how to put touch on it. He has a quick release. He has all the tools to be a really good quarterback, very good leadership skills, intelligent, all of those factors. Um, it's just, is he ever going to get a chance to pretty much demonstrate his ability? You know, he played in one very tough road game in Arrowhead. He didn't play particularly well in that game. Um, and, and and I guess, you know, he did make a mistake, you know, throwing the ball in the middle of the field. So, uh, you know, I guess it's, you know, how well can he read the defense or how well is he at recognizing coverage? Because at Utah State with Matt Wells, he would sometimes throw interceptions. But... I think Jordan Love is a very intriguing player. You get him on a cheap deal. You put a good defense around him. I think he's a wow type of quarterback that can lead a playoff team as a starter. But it's something that, again, he might never get the chance to do it. So it's a hypothetical that might not ever come to fruition. You know, so it's the same it's the same way. Like say I said Ian Book, you know, should be an NFL starter. I mean, Ian Book, I'm not saying that. Um, Ian Book had one chance to start and he wasn't very good and he doesn't have the talent that Jordan Love possesses. But again, the people that say, Oh, Ian Book would have been a great NFL quarterback, they're never gonna be proven wrong because they're never gonna be given the big enough sample size to be proven very wrong over that time. But the NFL's a group think league. That's why Baker Mayfield um again was ignored by all 32 teams it's why Jimmy Garoppolo's not being traded nobody really stretches outside the boundaries of normalcy in the NFL and that's why a lot of the same teams have won uh in similar years because it follows a very strict pattern but Jordan Love really showed showed flashes. I love the way he played. He played aggressive. He stuck a back shoulder. He hit two 40-yard touchdowns. He scored overall like 17 points of you know production in the first half. So I think that Love looked really good. And okay, he threw a ball high in the red zone. It got intercepted. A guy undercut and made a great play on the ball, you know. So he's a young quarterback. He's going to throw interceptions, but you're also going to hit explosives with him, and the offense is going to move down the field. I thought that Daniel Jones looked all right, honestly. I mean, Tyrod against the twos was very efficient. Um, But Daniel Jones um, threw a good screen ball, threw a decent slant pattern, moved the team all right. He's just a slow processor, and he doesn't really have a huge arm. He's not twitchy enough to really play the position at a high level. He lacks some of the physical tools to really be a great quarterback or even to be a stable starter. He's not a starter. Uh, He's not that good, and you're seeing in training camp how, you know, he's having these off days right now, and that's because this offense, I mean, Tennessee's going to rock the Giants to start the year, and Carolina's looking pretty good with Mayfield. They're going to have a chance to beat the Giants, and then can the Cowboys come in and take care of business on the road? You get Dable off to an 0-3 start with Jones. I mean, then you're really going to test Brian Dable. You're going to test, is he going to put Tyrod in? You're going to test ownership. You're going to test how patient are the Giants going to be with Brian Dable. Let's talk about Drew Locke. All right, we'll talk about Drew Locke. We'll talk about the Seahawks quarterback competition in the preseason. So Geno Smith went out there. I watched the game very closely. Um, At first, uh, it it was Trubisky leading a flawless drive with Gunnar Olszewski where they look like literally Montana and Rice out there. 
Seahawks defense is very young. And the thing about very young defenses is that even though they could be good in a couple of years, they need like two or three years to really, you know, notch it up perfectly. And so you got Tariq Woolen, you got Boye Mafe. Um, the roster is incredibly, incredibly young. You need linebackers. You're going to need some defensive linemen on that defense. All right. You have Kobe Bryant, you have Woolen. Um, so. I mean, maybe there's some secondary pieces there in Seattle, but I mean, their defense, I don't know if their defense is going to be that stout. They're totally rebuilding. On the offensive side of the ball, you sign Metcalf, you have Tyler Lockett. The running game actually looked really good. You're, you're, you're instituting the tackles like Abraham Lucas, and you're instituting some, some guys like Charles Cross on the O-line, and it's an exciting time for Seattle. I mean, Pete Carroll still has a ton of energy, still coaching, and listen, Seattle, the one thing about them is that it's a tough place to play. And their tradition of defense, they have some of the best coaches in the league. They're going to get their defense, even though they're young, they, they're still going to be like suitable. I don't know if their defense is going to be absolutely horrible, but their defensive personnel is very, very young. But it's very, very exciting at, um, at multiple spots. And Woolen at, at, at 6'4", I like those longer cornerbacks that can really deflect the football well. So... Man, oh man, let's talk about the quarterback competition. So Geno Smith came out guns blazing, had a beautiful rollout pass um, to Noah Fant right on the fingertips. He came out, he really slung it, he really threw the ball well to start, but then he had a 12-man on the field penalty, and then he took a terrible sack. Uh, the one thing about Geno is he has bad pocket movement in the pocket. He sometimes goes back five yards, tries to make something out of nothing, panics if his first or second read isn't there, um, and, and can sometimes run around and, and take big yards for loss, okay? But the one thing about Geno Smith is he was plagued by drops. Then the second, posi- second possession, Geno got pinned inside the five. They ran it three times. They had a third and one, and the O-line just got stuffed by, by Steelers. So it's hard to blame Geno there, even though the drive was a failure. And even though the drive didn't result in any points whatsoever, he did nothing wrong. Um, then you look at, I think Gino led a field goal drive where, you know, he found his check downs. The one thing is when Gino was in the pocket, he was very accurate. He had two drops and Noah Fant did not get his foot down. So he was very accurate. And then the two minute drill, he was flawless. He was fantastic. He threw a really good dig route across the field, improvised on the one yard line, was able to break a tackle and score by himself. So overall, Gino Smith, very accurate, did not ever put the ball in harm's way found his check downs not the most explosive offense in the world but situationally two minute drill was pretty good gives him about an 83 to an 84 because he was like we're gonna say one and a half out of four or he you know I'll give one point to touchdown drives a half a point to field goal drives um, so Gino was about one and a half out of four playing against a good defense, and he did not have his top two receivers. The one thing about Drew Locke, and this is what you have to realize in this competition, is that Drew Locke, Drew Locke needs to go in, and he needs to win this competition because the Seahawks coaches, Shane Waldron and, and Carroll, they're going to feel more comfortable putting Geno in because if Geno does not execute, then they are going to then put in Drew you know, in week three, week four, if the, if the season's already off the rails. But if they start Locke and Locke really struggles, they're, they're probably going to have trouble putting in Geno because Locke is so young. All right, so it's it's kind of like an incumbent senior. You know, it's kind of like you're coaching high school sports. You have a senior that started a lot of years, and then you have a younger kid, like a sophomore, that has a lot of talent but doesn't really know the system. You don't really trust him all that well. And if you kind of bench the senior, it's gonna be he's gonna be disengaged. I guess like basketball and football are a little bit different. You can only play one player in at quarterback. So I mean, again, I like Drew Locke. Like, he's probably my favorite player, honestly, in the NFL. Uh, I've watched him since Missouri, since Lee Summit days, since the Elite 11, 6'4", huge arm. Um, was there Gary Pinkle's last year. 
uh, through the coaching change to, to Barry Odom, and I watched him all the time. You know, just huge arm, huge upside, guy that can really just throw the ball, you know, at an elite level down the field, can throw it with velocity, can also throw it like 55, 60 yards in the air. When he was in Heupel's offense at Missouri, he was just a star. And, um, and yeah, and the problem with Locke is at times, like, he's very friendly, very nice guy, but at times, you know, he's... He was younger. He thought the NFL was kind of overwhelming for him when he was really starting out. And at the end of the game, do you want to see that killer instinct, all right? And and even in the bowl game, like, he'll always get his team kind of like, he'll always compete at Missouri, but did he ever win big, big at Missouri? He did not. And then in Denver, too, he was hurt. Uh, he had trouble kind of acclimating to defenses, but now he's really playing the position. Now he understands like, hey, get the ball to your playmakers. Don't make mistakes. Don't fumble the ball. Don't hold the ball out with one hand. I mean, because the one thing is he'll fumble the ball. He's he's not, you know, sturdy in the pocket, nine-inch hands, and that's the thing. And, and the blindside hit, it wasn't a good check by Drew Locke, and I don't blame anybody who gets hit blindside. You're going to fumble it, so it's not like Drew Locke was weak with the football there. It, he was weak in terms of dissecting the blitz. So, listen, I'm a big Locke fan. I'm going to be very harsh on Drew Locke, though, or I'm going to grade him highly because, listen, the guy has a lot of talent. This is He has to have urgency, and he's doing a tremendous job so far through camp of putting one foot in front of the other and really you know paying attention to the day-to-day taking it day by day doing the most of what he can with every rep he said something great you know is my favorite quote of Locke and Locke's always been a great quote and a really fun athlete to follow my favorite quote of Drew Locke was hey I could be playing at Bellevue High School across the street playing varsity or JV playing varsity at Bellevue and each snap I take you know I realize that it's you know the most important snap of my life so I'm I'm totally um, bought in, and I I love just playing every snap I get, and it it is a blessing. And with Teddy Bridgewater, when Locke got sat by Fangio, and he really just got shoved out there by the coaching staff, Shermer and Fangio just, just gave him no confidence at all. He was really done a disservice definitely his doing as well he's not exempt from criticism he didn't win any games his statistics were poor um so he wasn't very good by any metric statistically he wasn't but again you saw the flashes but Shermer very stubborn Fangio old stubborn coaches didn't like his personality and just they didn't vibe at all. It was just a bad partnership. But I think that he's really going to a place now with Schneider and um, and Carroll, all right, um, that I think, and Shane Waldron, that I think are giving him, like, a decent opportunity. Now, he's never taken first-team reps really over Smith. There's been times in scrimmages where Locke has been kind of parallel to Smith at least in the mock game he got a chance to work with those guys a little bit but off of four days rest coming up for this Bears game since it only is a four-day rest and it's the first home game I think that they're going to roll with Smith and it's Smith they're going to play Smith like a quarter but then they're going to play Locke like two quarters and if Locke can play great and Smith kind of plays average then that final game in Dallas will be Locke's chance to secure the job that that's how I think it's going, all right? They're, they're trying to say, hey, Drew, go match Smith and overtake him, all right, and try to win this job. So, so Locke against the Steelers, first drive was fantastic. Um, rolled left, made an easy throw out to the flat. Bo Melton made him right, yard after catch, gained like 60. DJ Dallas pounded the football, and then Locke did a really nice job finding his, his, his secondary read on second and five on the first drive. He had a crosser to the right-hand side, beautiful throw in rhythm, like a four-yard pass, but it was just in rhythm. It was really good quarterbacking by Locke. Got him down to the five-yard line, answering a touchdown by Pittsburgh. 
Then on second and goal, they ran a play action. He kind of threw a, a, a risky kind of fade ball to left corner. Defender got his hand on it. Not his best rep at all. Put the ball in harm's way. Fur down, though, he pinned a 50-50 ball from the three-yard line through a touchdown pass. So the first drive, phenomenal. was great. Second drive then. You know, Locke, again, comes out. You know, the team is moving it very well. He's getting ready to score more points. Either I'll give him half a point for a field goal or even a touchdown. Then, false start, second and 15. Then, Locke throws on second and 13 his worst pass. Ball got deflected or came out wobbly. Was an ugly ball, incomplete. Then he then Ferd and thirteen Waldron and Locke they mailed it in completely screen pass just setting up a punt but a terrible ball like he he Locke missed it you could see from his reaction he threw the ball too far in front of the receiver it put him in harm's way just not a good rep ugly end to the series but then they pinned Seattle deep. Or no, they pinned Pittsburgh deep, got a three and out, which was great. So at least Locke, he never went three and out. That's the one thing. So he was consistent. The team moved the ball very well. All right. So then Locke, um, yeah, they're down eight. Fourth quarter, he comes out there, great field position, and he has his best drive, best series. Throws a really good ball on like his third read kind of a, you know, throws out to the flat, but it's a far hash throw. Great ball. Receiver takes it in stride, cuts up field. Great gain. And then his best ball also was like a 12 to 13 yard, like bread and butter kind of slant um, or a dig route that Locke just drilled. And then they got down to the goal line. Dallas ran it really well. Lock, flick, out, easy touchdown, two-point conversion. They got the they got the guys in together. Play clock winding down. Lock, roll out, throws it up, touchdown. So then you're thinking, all right, all right. Drew Lock, 15 points in, two pos- in three possessions. He's outperforming Geno. He's two out of three. Lock's gonna 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 end up. He, right now, Lock was at like a 93 grade that I would put him at. He was at an A. But then Drew Lock again. He's moving the team. He's having another great drive. Then he takes a terrible sack. Takes a terrible sack. Loses seven yards. Bad sack. Bad protection. Bad sack. All right, this is his fourth possession. Then Locke, they call a shot play for him, decently protected. If he would have hit this, it would have been the, the winner in the quarterback competition. He sailed it high and missed missed a throw down the field. I love the aggressiveness, though, but it didn't pan out. And then finally, the defense holds, and then you get the blown up play. So he ends up, go- and then he ends up fumbling. So he ends up going two for five. And if I had to give Locke a grade, the offense just moved so much better. Excluding the last series, there were never any three and outs. He got better. He, first of all, the receivers didn't drop passes, and the running game was better with Locke. I'm going to give Locke an 88 or an 87, Geno an 84. The bottom line is that Locke was hovering at an A. Say Locke scored three touchdowns out of five possessions, or say Locke drove the team down, they kicked the game winner in the end then Locke would have decisively beat Smith. I'm going to give Locke a little bit of the edge. If we're doing this in terms of boxing rounds, it's a 10-9 for Locke. It's not a 10-8 at all. And um, Geno Smith's the incumbent, and if you're going to beat the incumbent, you're going to have to come in and do a and do even better. So, again, not a terrible start for Locke, but right now the competition is neck and neck. Again, I'm the biggest Drew Locke fan, but I can admit, hey, he hasn't been that good in the NFL, and I, I sometimes bore my friends with Drew Locke because they're like, man, you're, I'm just sick and tired of hearing about Drew Locke. But um, in preseason sometimes, listen, you know, the defense can sometimes be terrible for you and the clock can burn on the other side of the ball. Sometimes then you'll get a terrible run or you get third and two, you call a run play, so your drive ends because the O-line in the back can't gain two yards. Or sometimes the run game's great and you're dealing with second and threes all day and then you got to take advantage of that. All right, so Geno Smith was also plagued by like a Mason Rudolph marathon drive. 
So that's preseason football, you know, kind of in a nutshell there. Um, I thought Baker was sharp. He was crisp. He, he flat out won the job. Zach Wilson did not look very good. Daniel Jones in the Dable offense is going to be fun to watch, even though Tyrod Taylor uh, was very good. Uh, D- Daniel Jones was fine in his preseason game. Um, but again, really struggling in training camp for the last couple of days. And Daniel Jones hasn't won any games in the NFL at a high level. He's he's gotten a lot of chances to start, and the offense has been putrid with him. So he's going to have to have a year that just changes perception completely. At least Baker Mayfield was able to have his moments in Cleveland as a rookie and then in that first season of making the playoffs. So... And leading a good offense and lead and being competitive. People think that like the Cleveland Browns roster is like the eighty six Bears roster. They're like Baker Mayfield's the one weakness on that roster. So now let's see what they do with a competent veteran in um in Brissett and then Deshaun Watson, who's a superstar quarterback when he's on the field. So anyway, guys, it was fun talking preseason. Maybe wrap it up tonight, do a couple of um Film reviews here on some college players. Again, we're a week out from week zero in college football. But I thank you guys for listening to my thoughts on the NFL in preseason one, week one.